get in the morning you prepare them and uh, after doing your medicine you know your machine check anesthetic machine check you prepare these drugs and these drugs um it doesn't matter whether you're gonna do a spinal or a ga you need to prepare them and put them there okay so what are these drugs so the first one we're going to talk about is ephedrine so these drugs there's five of them um but also it depends from center to center there are people who believe that um Asians mentions the drugs should be four drugs let me just list the drugs first so there are some people who believe that ephedrine is there vinyl ephrine is there adrenaline is there and saxmethonium saxmethonium and then the number five is atropine there are places that have got a longer list but these are the basic imaging drugs that you need to have and there are people who believe that adrenaline shouldn't really really be there and they don't prepare it there are those who prepare it then there are people who feel that phenylephrine shouldn't really really be there so we find that what is important is just know if someone were to ask you just give them the, these five just prepare these five um you rather have five drugs than to have four drugs and actually find find out later that you actually needed the fifth drug so yeah and then there are people who add other drugs on top of these five um but not everyone does that so these are the the basic the five basic emergency drugs that whenever they ask you about emergency drugs you need to mention them and also need to know how to use them when to use them and all of that so but where i work currently we do the five emergency drug preparation um i know there are people who don't put adrenaline there like i said some put adrenaline some do not put phenylephrine so yeah and also it depends where you're working who's teaching you what articles do they, do they read what do they practice and all of that so yeah so that's just how medicine is uh, people have got their preferences and all of that anyway so these are the five emergency drugs Whenever someone asks you what are the emergency drugs in anesthesia, these are the drugs that we mention. And uh, this is very, this is a, a, a high yield question for students. They like to ask this and they also like to ask which ones are kept in the fridge, which ones are not kept in the fridge and how do you prepare them. So the ones that are kept in the fridge, um, I'll just put um, an F. So saxmethonium is kept in the fridge or is kept in a cold environment in a small whatever but with ice and all of that. So saxmethonium is one, nephrin is the other drug. So these are kept in ice or in a fridge. So now let's talk about How do you mix them and all of that? So the first drug we're going to talk about is ephedrine. So ephedrine, as we all know, it has got, it causes two effects. It is a positive chronotrope and also an inotrope so it does increase heart rate it does um, 
increase or cause contractility. So, which means when you give ephedrine, you expect some kind of an increase in heart rate and also increase in cardiac output, therefore increase in blood pressure. So, how does ephedrine come? So, it comes in a vial which is labeled or written. 50 milligrams per meal. So you need to dilute it. So the way you dilute it is that you take that vial and take that one meal, which is equal to 50 milligrams. You take that one meal, you add that to a, a nine meals of nomasaline. So you're gonna use a ten syringe, a ten mil syringe for this, the mass line, right? So once you do that, you're gonna have that fifty milligrams in a ten mil solution, and that will give you five milligrams per meal right so now in that in that um, in that 10 mil syringe that you have there in that 10 mil syringe one meal is equals to five milligrams but you've got 10 mils of that so the way in which you give it you give about one to two meals at a time so if you give so you know that if you give one meal you're actually giving five milligrams if you give two meals you're actually giving 10 milligrams right so we all know that you you, you use ephedrine when you have hypotension hypo tension and that hypotension is usually because of the anesthetic drugs that we have used, whether it's IV or the volatiles. So you have hypotension. Remember when we did spinal anesthesia, we said that if you have hypotension plus an increased heart rate which means a tachycardia you can't use ephedrine as much as you wanna use ephedrine for, a, for the hypotension but if you've got hypotension that is accompanied by a tachycardia so you can't use ephedrine because ephedrine causes an increased heart rate what we call a a, a, a positive chronotropic effect so which means if you give ephedrine to a patient who has got a high, a high heart rate or a tachycardia this will just worsen just gonna worsen that's why you have an option of giving phenylephrine you give phenylephrine in this case but when you have hypotension which is a low blood pressure plus um, a bradycardia or, a, or um, a heart rate of less than 60 you can't give 
phenylephrine, you need to give ephedrine. Why do you give ephedrine? It's because you want to reverse this bradycardia because you know that ephedrine has got a positive chronotropic effect. That's why you give it. Let's say you've got this scenario and you still give phenylephrine. Phenylephrine is known to have what they call a reflex bradycardia. So you have a, you have a patient that's got a bradycardia already and giving phenylephrine will just worsen the bradycardia. So this is how you decide which one you're going to give between the ephedrine and the phenylephrine. Right? Um, I think we are done in terms of the ephedrine. So the reason why ephedrine has got both these effects is because it also it works on the beta one and the beta two. The reason why a patient who's got a bronchial remember beta two receptors are in the bronchioles and beta one in the heart. So when these are stimulated contractility increases and cardiac output increases and then blood pressure increases because of the beta 1. Stimulating beta 2 causes bronchodilation. That's why you can give ephedrine on an asthmatic patient or a COPD patient. Um, and also ephedrine works on the alpha receptors and cause vaso dilation i mean sorry vasoconstriction remember if vasodilate you are gonna worsen the the hypotension you want a vasopressor or a vasoconstrictor to increase the blood pressure so it's your alpha receptors that do that okay let's move on to the uh let's move on to phenylephrine Okay, now that we've got space, let's talk about phenylephrine. Um, phenylephrine works on the alpha receptors, which are found in the arteries. It stimulates them and causes them to to constrict. Once they constrict, that results in an increased uh, referral vascular resistance. So, we know that this is a drug that you give when you've got hypotension. Um, but we know that BP is equal to cardiac output multiplied by peripheral vascular resistance. So, if you increase According to this formula, if you increase uh, peripheral, peripheral resistance, you end up increasing blood pressure. So if this is decreased hypotension, then by increasing this, you can increase um, the blood pressure. So that's why we use phenylephrine. Phenylephrine does not work on the beta blockers and sorry on the beta receptors so it doesn't have any chronotropic effect it doesn't have any inotropic effect right and we did say that this is a drug that you use when you've got hypotension when you have hypotension, decreased blood pressure, plus a tachycardia, you can use phenylephrine. Because remember the side effect of phenylephrine reflects bradycardia. So, if you've got hypotension plus a tachycardia, 
you give final offering, you're going to increase the blood pressure. But most importantly, you also, because of the reflex bradycardia, you are going to drop your, your heart rate. That's why you can't use a phenylephrine when you've got hypotension plus a bradycardia because you already have an existing bradycardia. Now, if you give phenylephrine, which also causes bradycardia, you're going to worsen the bradycardia of the patient. The bradycardia is a heart rate of less than 60. Okay, so how do you mix phenylephrine? Phenylephrine comes in as a 10 milligram is equals to one meal or a meal vial vial so what you do you take that 10 um, milligrams and then you take uh, 200 mils of namasaline so you're going to take that uh, meal then you add that 200 mils of namasaline then what you're going to get there is a zero zero five milligrams right so if you multiply this by a thousand to convert it to micrograms you're gonna get 50 micrograms per meal so the syringe is always written like this it will be they'll write like this p e p then they'll be like 50 is to one right if this is the most common concentration that we prepare but you can also prepare this using 100 mils and when you do that you'll prepare a solution like this if you use 100 so so converting um, milligrams <coughs> To micrograms that's why you multiply by a thousand to get this so that's phenylephrine so let's quickly talk about the about salts methonium next the next drug is scoline or salts methonium so methanium comes in a vial, it's labeled 100 milligrams, two meals, in two meals. It's not diluted, so the syringe will, will be labeled sax 50 is to one, meaning every every meal has got 50 milligrams just dividing by two here and get that so that sucks so sax is used in the rapid sequence induction and also in laryngospasm Laryngo. when all the other options have failed that sucks um, so if you go and look at where I covered muscle relaxants, I did cover sucks in detail there. The formulation, the, the chemical structure, how it works, side effects, and all of that. So the next drug is atropine. 